Welcome to Musings of an Earth Girl. I am your host, Laurel Bleeding Maffei, and I'm so grateful for our time together. This podcast is designed to be a loving, sweet space where you can rest for a while. We'll be talking about snippets of life, we'll be talking about angels, we'll be talking about moments of inspiration that serve as catalysts to move our life forward. I'm so grateful for this time together. So sit back and get comfortable and we'll see where this conversation takes us. Hello, beautiful friends. This is Laurel Bleeden Maffei and welcome to my podcast, Musings of an Earth Girl. If we're meeting for the first time, I'm an angelic practitioner and a spiritual teacher and an encourager of souls. <laughs> and I'm here to bring you a broadcast that will hopefully infuse your day or night or wee hours of the morning whenever you're listening to this with some love, with some inspiration, with some companionship to let you know that your life matters and that you are a blessing here on earth. I'm asking the angels to infuse this broadcast with love so that wherever you are, whenever this is that you are listening, that you can feel the love streaming through these words, through this broadcast, through to your heart. It's a wonderful thing to live in a time when technology exists such as this. When I can broadcast to you from my heart, and hopefully you can receive it into yours. I'm so grateful for this time together. And so whatever you're doing right now, whether you are commuting to or from work, whether you are going for a walk, whether you're preparing dinner, whether you're just mucking about and not doing much of anything at all, which in fact is one of my favorite ways to pass the time, I am grateful for this opportunity to be with you. And this episode is inspired by four quotes that changed my life. You know, I don't know when I recognized that I was a quote person. <laughs> there was something magical about small snippets of words that capture a sentiment and then really targets into our hearts. That is so powerful. I love long form writing too. I can do several podcasts on the books that changed my life. I'm sure you could too. I could also probably do podcasts on books that I hope would change my life if only I would read them. <laughs> Don't we all have those books stacked up around our home or on our iPads or tablets of the books when we know once we read them, our lives will change considerably? One of the things I love so much about quotes is they take no effort at all to absorb. You know, they show up on our path somehow, whether it's on social media, whether it's on a greeting card. They're short enough that they can find us when we need them. And that's what these four quotes I'm going to share with you have done for me. And they are sprinkled throughout different times of my life. And it's not lost on me that as I prepare for this broadcast, that much of my work in the world is doing short form writing. For years now, I have fed into my Facebook page posters that have different writings from me on it, short form, three or four sentences. And I know, even know early on when I was exploring what my journey would be as a writer, that I kept seeing it as short little snippets of light, snippets of color that people could take in whenever they needed them. I think there's something so magical about this. So I love that I get to share with you four of the snippets of color that made a difference in my life. And I'm hoping it'll help you reflect on some of the quotes that touched yours. And maybe in the coming days, you'll share them, whether you share them on social media, whether you share them with a friend who you think needs to hear some words of encouragement. So here's where we begin. This is the first quote I remember changing my life. 
So I was probably about 19 years old. I remember this because I was in college and I was looking for a card to send to a specific friend who I loved a lot. Um, not rom- I don't know why this is important to say, not romantic love, but, but just a wonderful friend. And I found a card that said this on it. It says, I'm going to say it says, because this is just another little anecdote that I still have this card. I never wound up sending it to her. I kept this card and this card is still in a box of treasures that lives in my garage. So I still have it all these years later. Here's what it says. To laugh often and much. To win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children. To earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends. To appreciate the beauty. To find the best in others. To leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. To know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived, this is to succeed. And so just breathe that in for a moment. When I bought the greeting card, this quote was attributed to Ralph Waldo Emerson. And for many years, I thought that he was the one who wrote it. It was only a few years ago when I began researching this quote that I found out that he actually did not write it. (laughs) So I've attributed it to him many, many times, as do others. There's a great article on the website, (laughs) quoteinvestigator.com, that tells you more about the origins of this quote. And I will, in this moment, recognize that this was written by Bessie A. Stanley. Now, the way she wrote it was a little bit different. So her original quote is different than the one I just read you. And then someone else updated it over the years, and eventually it got attributed to Ralph Waldo Emerson. So you can read more about that, a little plug out to quoteinvestigator.com. Again, I love how there are websites for just about everything, and you can read more about the journey of this quote. But I want to share with you what this quote meant to me. So here I was 19 years old, and I don't know that I'd given much thought to the meaning of my life. I don't know that I was all that introspective. I I certainly think I thought about myself and what I wanted to do with my life, but I don't know that I had this sense of self-awareness. So this is the line that really struck me and stayed with me ever since. To know that even one life has breathed easier because you have lived, this is to succeed. And I even remember in my 19-year-old experience of that, I thought that was the highest thing I could ever achieve in my life. That if At the end of my life, even one person had breathed easier because I had lived than I had lived a good life. And up until that moment, I don't know that I fully had taken that in. I mean, certainly I was I was brought up with, you know, the idea of service and I I was raised Jewish. So we talked about tzedakah, which is charity. But there was something about to know that one life has breathed easier because you have lived, that felt like that could be such a blessing in this world. And this is still a part of my journey. You know, I think sometimes we are so into numbers. This is how many followers I have on social media. This is how big my mailing list is. This is how many friends I have on Facebook. This is how many people liked my post. And we get into these aggregate numbers. But Each person reflects the universe, right? Each person reflects the breath of God. And if we touch even one life, we have touched the world. And this has been part of my life's mission ever since that moment. I don't, and I don't mean to make it sound like 19 year old me all of a sudden became philanthropic. That certainly was not the case. I was not one of those like cool kids that were feeding the homeless out of the trunk of my car. 
I was pretty, I was pretty self-absorbed back then, as you know, many people of that age stage are. But but I knew somehow that this was meaningful to me, and certainly now, all these years later, it's um, it's one of the cornerstones of how I want to live my life. That at the end of my life, whenever that is, hopefully it's going to be a long, long time from now that I will have left a ripple of goodness that will have had meaning for other people in a positive way to leave the world a little bit better than I found it. And if you're listening to this podcast, I know that this is true for you too. You would not be listening to a podcast like this if this was not part of your soul's mission too. So in this moment, I acknowledge you for all the ways that you are helping others' lives to breathe easier too even if it's just one person, you're making a difference. All right. Can you believe that's just the first quote? We still have three more to go. <laughs> All right. You, you're, you're welcome to break this podcast up. If you want to just listen to one quote a day, you can do that. Um, but I'm going to keep going. <laughs> so, so here's the second quote. This quote came to me many years later. This quote found me somewhere around the year 2000, which I call the year of my awakening. That was the the year that I cracked open <laughs> and started my spiritual journey in earnest. Again, that's probably gonna be several podcasts in and of itself. So here's the quote. Be patient toward all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. Like locked rooms, And like books that are now written in a very foreign tongue. Do not now seek the answers which cannot be given you because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. And perhaps you will then gradually, without noticing it, live along some distant day into the answer. And this is by Rilke. It's from Letters to a Young Poet. This quote has carried me through so many of my life experiences over the last 18 years. It has carried me through darkness. It has carried me through the mystery. You know, there's times in our lives when we go through such a deep transformation We can't see who we are becoming. And that's where I was when this quote found me. I was in the process of shedding my skin of who I thought I was, but no longer felt authentic to me. I was having deep conversation within my own heart. Who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? What is the meaning of my life? I mean, these are big questions and they're not answered in a weekend workshop. They take time. We, we almost, for me, I almost completely disassembled myself and then tried to find my way back together. And this, this quote is so powerful because there are times in our lives where we want the answers so badly. Just someone tell me who I am and someone tell me where I am going and how to get there. But this quote reminds us that sometimes we're not yet ready for the answer. Sometimes it is ours to be in the mystery, even though the mystery sometimes feels like the abyss. And we have to be in the mystery because it is the process of going through the mystery and living the question that gives us the transformation that allows us to become the expression of ourselves who has found our way into the answer. And this certainly was true for me. For many years, this quote was my prayer. (laughs) I didn't know how the story was going to end. And my prayer was, please let this be true for me someday that I will realize that I have found my way into my answers. And and I'll share with you a little um, insight to how this worked for me. So when this prayer first found me, I was working as a market analyst in the entertainment industry I wasn't happy with myself or in my life. And and I didn't know what I wanted. I knew at some point I wanted to get married, hopefully have kids. That was still part of my dream back then. 
kind of. <laughs> um, and what happened is I, through my unhappiness, I found my way into the University of Santa Monica, where I worked towards getting a master's degree in spiritual psychology. And that was the catalyst for everything. And then I found my way into working with the angels. And then I decided to leave my corporate job and start my full-time business with Illuminating Souls. And I met my husband. And back when I was asking the question, if someone had told me my answer, which is, okay, well, here's the deal. You're going to go back to school. You're going to get your master's degree. You're going to find that you're incredibly spiritual and you have all these intuitive gifts and you're going to be talking to angels and you're going to be channeling, even though you don't know what channeling is right now. And you're going to leave Los Angeles and you're going to move up to Northern California and you're going to meet your man and you're going to get married. Ta-da! <laughs> all of that would have felt so foreign and intimidating to me. I know I would have shut down. There are times when we are not yet ready to see the fullness of who we are. We have to go through this metamorphosis and go through this transformation because we aren't yet ready to see the fullness of who we are. So this is the quote that I still carry with me because you know what? Until we leave this earth, there will still be times in our life when we are living the question. And I'll tell you, as people who have strong intellect, who love to, to know things, I'll at least say this for myself, but I think also you have a strong intellect, right? We want our answers. Like who wants to struggle and muck about in the question and in the mystery? <laughs> Just give me the answer already. And you know, it's so much to the point that I can't read a mystery. I hate mysteries. And I hate, <laughs> okay, this is a confession time. I hate magic as in magicians. I don't hate magicians. They're lovely people. But I hate illusionists and, you know, ta-da, and, <laughs> and they all of a sudden bring forward an illusion. And and I hate not knowing how it's done. I have Mercury and Gemini, and I need to know stuff. So being in the question and being in the mystery is not in alignment with who I am. And yet this quote brings me tremendous comfort. So that's quote number two. Again, if you want to if you want to pause now and return later for quote number three, you have my invitation to do so, but we'll continue. So here's quote number three. And and this quote is incredibly famous. If, if you are on a spiritual journey of self-growth, I know you know this quote. And I imagine this quote has also touched your heart because it's one of the, it's one of the quotes that everybody quotes. <laughs> and Yes, it's the Marianne Williamson quote. And I know that you know the one that I'm talking about. And if you don't, and if you've never heard it before, take a deep breath in because you will want to receive this. So here's the quote. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us. It is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And that is from Marianne Williamson. And it is often attributed to Nelson Mandela because he used it, I believe, in his inauguration speech. Um, Apologies if I don't have that attribution right. So this quote, it it touches so many hearts, not just mine, I know. But for me, this concept that our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure was this 
unconscious truth that I wasn't even aware of until quotes like this began reflecting it to me. And as it did, I became so aware that throughout my life, I had been holding back because there was this belief that my energy and my beingness was so big and bright that if I really showed the fullness of who I was, there wouldn't be room for anyone else. And when I see this knowingness about my bigness, the bigness of my life force, the bigness of my light, I do not mean this in an egotistic, um, narcissistic way, as in I am so much bigger and better and brighter, as if there was some continuum of, you know, the brightest kids in the class. I don't mean it that way. I, I rather refer to this knowingness that somehow I was somebody who had a, a lot of life force in me. There was a brightness in me. And I think sometimes in our life, there's something about settling into the middle of the pack, right? Where if I think about us as human beings, from a species perspective, you know, we, we, we sort of have a pack and herd intuition, <laughs> you know, to sort of be in the herd, be in the pack as much as we buck against it. And I think there's safety in being in the middle, right? Not being the one who's noticed. And there's something also about our evolution that is about stepping away from the pack and individuating. I know I'm getting really deep here. <laughs> and in, in reading this quote and others like it, it made me realize that I had this innate fear of being seen as who I was. So this quote freed me. It, it gave me liberation. It, it, it helped me <laughs> feel into the bigness of who I am. And if I, if there's a bigness in me, it doesn't mean there isn't a bigness in you. And it doesn't mean that if I step forward in all my bigness, that there isn't room for you to step forward in all your bigness too. <laughs> this world is a big place. And so I love when she says, you playing small doesn't serve the world. It doesn't mean that you have to take up space so that others can't have it. This world is infinite. It means shine brightly, my friend, and let the beauty of who you are shine forth. So take a deep breath in on that one, right? Good. All right. And if you're still with me, we're going to go to quote number four. Again, if you want to split this up, you're welcome to, but I'm going to keep going because I'm in the groove. <laughs> All right. So let's keep rolling with quote number four. And quote number four is one that you may have never heard before. It's not a popular one. It's one that I heard back, I think somewhere around 2001 when I was attending Agape Spiritual Center in Los Angeles. And that is a spiritual center founded by Reverend Michael Beckwith. If you've never experienced Michael Beckwith, he is amazing. And he is the spiritual leader of Agape Spiritual Center. And you can go to agapelive.com. It's spelled A-G-A-P-E, live.com and watch some of their streaming services. It is um, uplifting, positive, affirmative. So it's 2001, and he was talking in his um, Sunday morning talk or sermon, whatever you want to call it, um, about how when God creates us, when God created us, God created beauty, right? We've all heard aspects of that. The Marianne Williamson quote speaks to that. And, and he was building up this head of steam as he was talking about this. And then this is the line that he said. He says, you are not an accident. You are an on purpose from God. And when he said that, something in me cracked open and I started to sob. You are not an accident. You are an on purpose from God. 
And there was something about receiving that in that moment after everything that he had been talking about and everything that had been going on in my life and living the question and Marianne Williamson saying, who are you not to you know, shine your light? And then Reverend Michael Beckwith saying, you are not an accident. You are an on purpose. You are an on purpose. And it, it just, it, there was something about that moment. It was, it was this moment where everything was coalescing and I was reaching critical mass and I, and I cracked open because I had been living my life with this belief that I was somehow flawed. And I don't mean to make it sound like I don't have flaws. Listen, we are all perfectly imperfect in who we are, but I, but I felt that there was something wrong with me. In that moment, realizing that who I was as Laurel wasn't on purpose, that I wasn't somehow letting down the divine in being who I was, that I wasn't letting down my potential, that I wasn't letting down my destiny, that I hadn't taken a left turn somewhere into mediocre and, and turned myself into an accidental human being whether it was my curly red hair, whether it was my red cheeks, whether it was my big body, whether it was my big personality, whether it was the way I laughed, whether it was my love for bad television, (laughs) whatever it was. There was an intention to my creation. There was an intention to my incarnation that within me were my gifts and my abilities and my flaws and everything that I was, was an intentional breath of God that I was not an accident, that I was on purpose. It liberated me. It liberated me and it changed me at a cellular level. So take a breath in because if this touches you too, I want to share this with you. My friend, you are not an accident. Your level of sensitivity, your quirkiness, your light, the way you feel into the world, the things that make you want to stand up and scream and be an advocate. (laughs) These aren't accidents. They're on purpose, this is. (laughs) Can I turn that into a noun? You're on purpose. You're an on purpose from God. That your life matters. That who you are matters. That you are on purpose. So take a breath in and receive that one. All right. I promised you four quotes that changed my life. And I feel like I want to give you a postscript here because um, I know some of you are new to my work. And if you are, I'm so glad you're here. But a lot of you who are listening are friends of my soul, right? I'm going to say friends of mine. I don't know why I kind of hedged that because I don't mean to. I just mean... There are, there are, I know that there are thousands of you out there who I don't personally know, but we're friends. Yes, I write these messages. I post them on social media. They find their way to you in a perfect moment and our souls know each other. So some of you listening, we're friends. So this quote I wanted to share because I, I don't know. Um, so this is, my, <laughs> this is my embarrassing confession, but I think it's one we've all done at times, Right. What happens when you Google yourself? What shows up? I'm always, I I don't want to make it sound like I always Google myself, but sometimes it's a curiosity. Like aside from what I'm publishing into the world, what does the world reflect back to me in terms of the snapshot I'm leaving? And this quote I'm going to share with you next. Again, if you want to take a pause and listen to this later, you can. This next quote I want to share with you is actually one of my quotes that has traveled far and wide. It's not my most popular quote, but it's up there. And I want to share it with you because it changed my life, even though I wrote it. <laughs> and if, if you can say that, you write is, I know that you know this because you, you likely journal, yes? And there are times that you bring forward words and and you kind of breathe in deeply because you can't believe this just traveled out of you, Right? It's like, oh my God, did I just write that? That's amazing. So here's the quote. I found my heart upon a mountain that I did not know I could climb. And I wonder how many other pieces of myself are secreted away in places that I judge I cannot go. 
And this quote was born while I was hiking around the Santa Monica Mountains. And that absolutely is a podcast all its own. (laughs) So this quote was published with a, a picture of a woman hiking. And it's interesting when I Google myself, which I don't do all the time, this quote is often found on people's blogs. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to actually do a podcast about where this quote came from. So stay tuned for the next episode where I share with you about the mountains in our lives. So my friends, thank you for letting me share with you the quotes that changed my life. I'd love to hear back from you about the quotes that changed yours. I send you love. I'm so grateful for you. You are an on purpose from God. And I love the way you shine your light. We'll talk again soon. I say to you for now, God bless. Namaste. Peace be with you. You are loved. Thank you. Musings of an Earth Girl is brought to you by me, Laurel Bleeden Maffei, and Illuminating Souls. I invite you to join me at illuminatingsouls.com, where you can learn more about the classes and services I offer, including angel readings, soul mentoring, and classes designed to inspire your spirit. You also can sign up for the Daily Inspiration Email Blast, where you'll receive an uplifting message from me each day by email, Monday through Friday. You can sign up for that at my homepage at Illuminating Souls. Thank you, dear one, for spending this time with me. You are why I do this work. You are why I've created this podcast. Because I know that whenever our souls meet, when we meet in the land of love and light and inspiration, the world becomes a bit brighter. So thank you for who you are and the light you shine in this world. I am so deeply grateful for you. I send you love. I send you blessings, and I send you sparkles of magic.